Hey guys, we're in the shed today. It's a little bit windy outside. So we're gonna do a walkthrough of my new Stesco. So let's go and have a look. Sorry about the mess in the background. I had to come in here out of the wind to film, otherwise you wouldn't have heard me. But, uh, so this guy is the heart of this boat. Um, Mercury, always been reliable for me. Um, I've had three, three, four Mercuries now. Um, this is my first four stroke. Uh, blown away with how quiet it is, how fuel efficient it is. Um, talky, like it's got I had a 30 horsepower two-stroke before this, 2016, 2017 model, and this thing outperforms it in every way, and this is only a 20 horsepower. Um, tiller design's awesome. They've changed the tiller design. So you've got your gear shift lever up the front here. Um, this particular uh, motor has heaps of adjustments in the tiller arm, so you can adjust it sideways um, if you want to have it back over here so if it's too close to yourself you find yourself sitting over that far of the boat and it's not balancing out properly you can move this tiller to see it sort of point this way a little bit more um, you can also adjust it up and down so if you want it to sit a little bit higher or lower you can do that and you can also change this setting to you steering on the opposite side. So if you want to steer the boat from this side, you can do that and you can make this go the other way. Um, what else can I tell you about it? This model, I, I really didn't spare any expense with this boat this time. I wanted to do it right. Um, electric start, electric tilt, super handy. So you tilt, you've got under here, you've got up and down and your start buttons here. Um, you've got backup. If you have a flat battery out in the water or something, disconnect the battery, pull start it, and this thing will get you back to the boat ramp. So, you pull one pull out of this will charge the internals. I don't know how it works, but basically, because it's EFI, you obviously need power electronically fuel injected. You can run these things EFI without a battery it's got something to do with kinetic energy or something like that but pull these out it charges something inside basically enough to run the EFI fine so always got that back up if I run out of battery power um, under the hood I'll give you a look for those guys who are interested I don't really know what I'm looking at because I've had two strokes all my life but that's it. Um, only thing I've done to this is added, I'll show you, an hour meter. So I've done 2.7 hours, as you can see. That just gives me um, an idea of when it needs to be serviced. So these guys have their first service at 20 hours. And, um, and then every 100 hours after that, so it doesn't need to be serviced very regularly. So yeah, that's, that's the motor in a nutshell. Starting from the back, we've got a marine battery 
a starter battery that runs this guy because it's an EFI, um, electronically fuel injected. I needed to run a battery, electric start, electric tilt that um, handles all that. I've also got it on a isolator switch so I don't have to worry about you know power running all the time, having flat batteries or anything like that. Um, and this motor also pumps at quarter throttle around 10 to 13 amps of power back into that battery so I run all my accessories solely off that battery except for the electric motor um, and I don't have to really worry about charging that ever really um, there's another battery box here but all I've got in that one is safety gear so I've got a bailing bucket um, waterproof torch uh, V sheet I've got a little fire extinguisher tucked down the bottom here that's mounted to the floor so it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, going across this side, it's just got the 12 litre fuel tank. Um, yeah, so that, that's it for the back. Oh, and I've also got a little, little bilge pump tucked in under here. So that's a, a Johnson uh, 750 gallon per hour bilge pump. It's mounted to a little bracket off the floor and all the power as you can see running from these battery goes into some conduit I've got suspended off the floor that runs all around the boat. So all my wiring is under the floor out of the way in conduit so it's protected. Alright let's go to the middle. Alright guys here we are in the middle. Um, We'll go start from this side panel that I've made. Um, I've made this to suit this bike specifically. Uh, we'll start from isolation switch. So we've got power coming from the rear battery, which is the starter battery. Um, isolation switch, and then I've got power to all my accessories except for the electric motor. Um, we've got uh, switches. So we've got depth sounder switch, bilge pump switch, navigation light switch, an accessory switch and a spare. Um, the accessory I haven't got wired up into anything at the moment. I've ran a wire already up to the front that's running off this accessory switch. Um, I've ran that because I want to run an e-port instead of that star port for the tablet mount. Uh, I found that having the tablet mirror, mirror imaging off this sounder, it chewed a lot of juice. Um, so I'm going to run constant power to the tablet all the time so I don't have to worry about that going flat on me. Um, behind here was something you can't see which is a, a fuse block. So I chose to run a fuse block um, for all my electrical which is makes everything electrical super super simple. Um, it's basically a bus bar and a fuse block in one so I run all my power to that fuse block and then I can run power from that fuse block to my accessories. So I run power from the fuse block to the switch panel and then all the switches run power to all my accessories. So if there's anything um, electrical that has to go wrong, it goes to that fuse block and it'll shut everything down. So there'll be no fires across my fingers. Um, then we've got a Lowrance Elite 9 TI2 9 inch display. Um, I chose this unit. I um, um and art about a Lowrance um, HDS live unit or this. Uh, my budget could only afford a 7 inch live unit or there was a 9 inch one of these guys so I was the same price. Um, I went to the bigger display over the live features. I don't think I'd ever use the live features and um, so far I haven't regretted that decision. And holding that up I've got a ram mount. Um, I'm not sure exactly what they call but I can throw a link to you if you want to know. Um, it's just basically a swivel arm mount. Um, really adjustable so if I need it close to me further away um, they just switch power um, to the front screen so I can see it from the casting platform if my tablet has issues or anything like that I can do so. Um, and you know it's I can I can adjust that with one hand with the ramp ball mounts you, you really need two hands to do everything and um, 
Yeah, so that, I found that mount to be really, really handy. And moving up, we've got a, a Railblazer starport. Um, in that starport, I've got a stove pod. But this stove pod is basically the jump drawer of the boat. Um, I've got a Bluetooth speaker in here because I like to listen to a bit of music um, when I'm fishing. Um, or a spare spot for a cup holder. And with the cup holder and Bluetooth speaker in here, there's also a fair bit of room in the middle where I can chuck used lures. Um, as your saltwater guys know, you've got to wash your lures off at the end of the day, otherwise they're going to rust up on you. So there's plenty of room for that. Um, take it in and out, super easy, quick. Um, holds my sense, so they're there. I know where they are all the time. I'm not searching around the boat for a sense. And I've got a gear safe leash um, that I use to leash my Bluetooth speaker onto. So if it's sitting here, I'm scooting to a, a spot or heading home because it's going. The wind's going to pick up or something like that. Um, I hit a bit of choppy, choppy water and you know, stuff bouncing everywhere. My Bluetooth speaker is not going to go off the side. And, um, yeah, so that just protects that from falling over. Um, and above, I've got uh, Railblazer track wedges. I've got one each side. So these guys are basically an awesome idea for, for aluminium boats. It allows you to have lots of accessories without drilling um, any holes in the boat, which I was really, really not wanting to drill many holes in this boat. Um, main thing I use here is this Railblazer. Um, it's a camera boom. I think it's called a Harlock 600 camera boom. There we go, it's in. So all my shots will come from this. Um, I can swivel it anywhere I need off the boat or out the side if I want to get side shots of the boat. Um, yeah, endless um, angles with cameras. And I've also got two Railblazer rod holders for if I have a lazy day or if I've got the kids with me and we're going to do a bit of bait fishing or trolling. Chuck two rod holders in here, hold the rods and um, yeah, that's that. So you super quick to change over. Anyway, that's the um, the side console. The middle floor oh, oops, is fairly simple. So it's just a flat floor. Um, I've just run little side pieces to fill in the sides so nothing can get go under the floor and get lost into Never Neverland. And up here, I've got all my power running up through here. As I said before, I've got all my wiring um, suspended off the floor in electrical conduit to stop anything from corroding. And then that just runs up in behind this board. So the only thing that's exposed to the elements is anything behind here. And I've de greased the shit out of everything behind here. So salt water would have to do well to get in there. But yeah, so that's that, and um, we'll move up the front. So here we are up the front. Um, with my decking, I ran it over the top of the bench seats. I just found it gives feel, makes you feel like it gives you more space to walk around. Um, having the bench seats exposed, I found before they were very slippery. Um, at a couple of times, I nearly fell in the drink from slipping on it from water being on there or dew from the cold or anything like that. Um, so that feels like it's opened this space up a hell of a lot more in a smaller platform. Um, here I've got a, another Railblazer starport. I use this for the Railblazer tablet mount. Um, you would have seen in the just shots at the front of the, at the start of the video, I have my tablet here which mirrors off the, the sounder. Um, hatch. Inside the hatch, I've got it on a gas strut so it doesn't go hit me on the head when I've got my head in there looking for stuff. Um, so we've got a, a Century Marine battery, 105 amp hour, deep cycle, which I run just the motor guide off. Um, and it runs through a 
50 amp circuit breaker, which also acts as an isolation switch. So I, I leave that broken um, when I want to. I want power. I just flip that little switch up there. You hear the beat. Um, I've got power running through to the electric motor, and also that will give me a reading. Uh, just make sure we can see that. Yep. Uh, reading for voltage for that front battery as well so and that's all that's all through the same circuit breaker so that's it. those those voltage meters run next to nothing in uh, power wise so um, yeah so that run that, that that's all I run off that battery is just that voltmeter and the motor guide um, we've also got just a big um, box of plastics I keep under the floor so they're out of the sun. Click that out. I've got my wireless motor guide foot pedal I keep under there. Um, it's always in the boat so I'll do, if I do happen to forget my um, hand control I've always got the foot control there but I found myself using this more than the, the buttons, hand buttons anyway. So that's that. So that's the hatch, nice big hatch, and under this little anchor well, I've always got a spare life jacket in case I forget one or I have to activate one and I need a spare, um, and also an anchor for safety reasons. Um, you you need a, a anchor by law or anyway you got to carry one so yeah that's always in there um, up the front I've got my bow rope for tying off and launching and stuff like that and also my navigation light which is a red green navigation light also required by law um, night fishing low light sort of conditions it's there I don't do a lot of night fishing, but if I do, it's there. So it's super tidy. Um, yeah, it looks like it's a part of the boat, really. Anyway, so that's the uh, front casting deck. We'll move on to the motor guide, and then I'll show you my um, little rod holders. All right, guys, another awesome addition to this boat was this motor guide XI3. Um, pinpoint GPS model so um, it's a brand new model I took a bit of a gamble buying it I know the XR5 was awesome um, they also come with their own issues as well as any other um, brand of electric motor but this has been awesome um, super super quiet heaps quieter than the XR5 um, for the motor, motor guide users you know that they're super accurate, they hold you on the spot. I haven't had any issues with that. Um, it seems a lot easier to deploy and stow. I'm not sure if it's a gas assist or anything like that, but it's really easy to pull up. Um, what else can I tell you about it? So you can link this to the Lowrance through the Namir 2000 um, link, but I don't think I'll ever do that. Um, and also it's on a quick release mount so uh, alloy boats you can't have electric motors bolted directly to the alloy otherwise it'll cause electrosis I think it's called it'll basically stuff your alloy over a slow period of time so it's on a quick release mount um, I saved some money on this guy I discovered that I didn't need to buy a branded motor guide quick release that was I think $200, $250 for the mount. Um, this is a water snake quick release which I purchased for about 60 bucks delivered. Um, bolts directly up to motor guide and Minn Kota motor so that's a little handy tip for you guys looking to get your motor on a quick release that don't have it already. So yeah, 
Not a lot else I can tell you about that. Um, battery power, I couldn't tell you what it's like on battery power yet. I've only used it a couple of times. Come back basically full battery still, so uh, yeah, I, I, I assume it will be pretty good. Being the GPS model though, they do chew a little bit more battery. So yeah, that's the uh, Motor Guide XI3. Wait for this truck to go past for the 50th time today. All right. So last thing I wanted to show you is uh, the rod holders that I've done up for this for this boat. Um, some of you might know that I used I had rails on my last boat and I used a H rail. Um, Hobie H rail rod stows and they were really good but I don't have the luxury of rails in this boat and I'm kind of glad I don't because they do get in the way more than they are handy but um, yeah so these are the rod holders I come up with so it's just a little bit of um, you know your elastic shock cord I think it's called I've got a little plastic kayak pad eye that I had laying around I've just tied that in a knot into a nylon J hook. So that just hooks down nicely. I'll chuck the rod in so I can show you. Here's one I prepared earlier. So that's a seven foot rod. That sits there nicely. Strap that down, strap that down. And that's not moving. I'll leave them. I'll leave the rods in it. I, I chuck them in at home. Trailer the boat down to the boat ramp, and um, I've got no worries of them not being there when I get there. Um, that'll hold three rods. I usually only take two with me, but um, so that'll hold three rods. Fine. Uh, if I find myself needing any more, I can do another one over the other side. But. Um, yeah, but I'm really happy with the way that's turned out and it cost me nothing. I had all that stuff laying around. Um, if you're to buy the stuff fee bay, I reckon it'd cost you less than 10 bucks for all that sort of gear. Um, three mil shock cord, J hooks and um, paddle eye. Um, that's about it, I think. Yeah, and, and you know, if you if you got passengers in the boat, they can sit on top of that and that's not going to get in the road um, and cause any discomfort to anyone. I did buy the, the Berkeley ones and I didn't like them at all, so uh, yeah. So as you would have seen in the uh, transformation bit of an intro I've done, it's white now, not aluminium, so um, vinyl wrapped this myself, first attempt at it. Super, super easy. A little bit of stuffing around, but uh, heat gun's your best friend. Um, I, I am a window tinner as well, so that um, experience did help a lot, I, I think. Um, all the stickers, new stickers over the top. Um, for vinyl wrap and new stickers over the top was less than $100 for the whole lot, so that's a super affordable way of changing the look of your boat and also protecting your boat. So um, I'll be definitely doing that again down the future, down the track. All right, guys, that's a wrap for this walkthrough. Any questions or anything like that, feel free to um, leave a comment below. I'm happy to answer any questions or or share photos of, of, of the build. I've got plenty of uh, progress pics of this build. Um, this is the third boat I've done now, so you know you get a little bit a little bit better at it every time. Uh, you, you improve on things that you, you wish you'd done different last time and stuff like that. But yeah, if, if there's anything, let us know below. Um, like the video, subscribe to my channel. I'll be putting up a few more videos in the near future, um, fishing out of this beast. Um, little DIY projects I come across, I'm, I'll be filming them as well. So uh, all fishing and, and boating related, obviously. Um, so yeah, all right guys, cheers.